You know it, I've been late again. Yep, to the party I've been late again. Many times I've had. Well, most of my releases that I bought up. It's because I need to uh, take the time to do planning and I do have a backlog of stocks, so... Mm. Although not a lot. Yeah, so I need to plan it out. So this just happens to come out on uh, the day you're watching it now. Gemini Dads, not without my mask, 747-8. You know them. You know this really doesn't really fit into my type as Asian, but I mean if we're into Kuala Lumpur, so yeah, and uh, I mean why not? Uh, you know it's an interactive, and especially with the new Gemini Dash Nippon Cargo, there's a lot of opportunities. Uh, you may be asking me Korean Air JC wings. It's a possibility. Then again, I'm still trying to collect my Garuda mask and everything first, so interactives are like a extra add-on. Um, but for now. Enjoy. It's a Marin model here. I was actually quite lucky. My dealer still had it. I was, cause at the time I was still focusing on my. Uh, I was still focused on my narrow bodies. I, was, I think I had the just gotten the Garuda mask the 737, which I've seen in my few videos before, and my Harima Malaysia. Yeah, so, so, it was about that time, you know, and, uh, well, I was looking to buy a Gemini Jets H320 Neo by, by Royal Brunei, but that one, either the box was not so good, or the more, or the wing seam was that, wasn't that good, so, I set up for this, I thought it was a bit more of it, because, um, comparing it to your normal, normal, uh, Gemini Jets so interactive, which could cost uh, normal German for seven four seven eight, which could cost you about. Give me a second, let me just run the calculations here. Yep. Oh, if we do the calculations of it being about, it will be about thirty eight USD. But now it's slightly more expensive by about. 2 to 3 US dollars, so doesn't really make that much uh, sense as it's not worth it because yeah, you are paying for extra parts here, 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 and here if you actually didn't notice. But anyway, let's get into it. So, you've got obviously, first of all, your clip art here showing the um, Cargo Lux aircraft in its uh, open nose, uh, in its open configuration. Do take note that the only reason why they're doing it in Dash 8 Interactive is because. They're focusing on, I think, a lot of other aircraft at the same time. Although I would say with the new up-and-coming 777-200F more uh, being released in the April release. Oh no, May, May, May. It was the May release. Uh, in the Aerologic livery and the 747-400F interactive being released, I think, six months ago in the form of the Kalita Air. And now it's the uh, China Cargo one. There really is potential for 400 scale down version. I just hope there is. Um, so moving on from the clip art, we obviously move downwards to the bottom here. Cargo Lux logo, this is not copyrighted, um, so to speak, so they're just taking it there. I don't think it's actually copy uh, licensed from Cargo Lux myself. Because if it is, it'll be way more expensive than it is right now. Uh, you've got an interactive series sign here showing you it's an interactive series. JC Wings only interactive series actually doesn't show that. The only reason why JC Wings has interactive is because Gemini Jets uses JC Wings factory. That way JC Wings is able to use them more. I'll talk more about JC Wings and Gemini Jets sharing video uh, sharing factories in a filler video. Uh, which is yet to be edited. Um, and uh, once I have my Firefly ATR 72 from JC Wings arrive. Huh? Obviously you've got your 747-AF uh, wording here with a trademark. Boy. Uh, you've got the uh, red cheat line here, 1400 die cast model, uh, scale die cast model in home to Cargo Lux's livery of red, of, uh, red on the tail. Mm -hmm. They you like to use a lot of red, even their logo, the triple cube, is uh, you know red, although it's white in the uh, tail, on the tail, because of a red tail, uh, white because of a red tail. Now I'm gonna go with uh, flipping this up. Uh, pop up tab, so, uh, this tab soon. I'm gonna look at the left uh, top. Wait, let me just. I'm gonna look at the. Uh, I'm gonna move on to the left top 
right and bottom. So we're gonna start the left side, which we're gonna unbox later. Now you can see there's more clip art here, Gemini Jets logo, interactive series. Okay, we got item number GJCLX, CLX being the uh, product code for Cargo Lux Aircraft, and this is 1954. I don't know why it's 1954, but okay, most likely it's random generation. This is uh, adult collectible model, not suitable for children under 14 years. Don't try and guess my age. I won't tell you what the barcode is, even if it's the number. You can read it out, I don't really matter. Because it's considered a bot item. Uh, yeah, this is the other side. It's the same as the left side. Look at the bottom. It just talks about uh, Gemini Jets as itself. 400 skill diecast model. Yes, that's true. High co highly collectible. Older versions. I'm not trying to criticize, but this is just stating the facts here. Yeah? So Gemini Jets don't be angry with me. Superior quality. Okay, yeah, for quality control, you're yeah, perfectly fine. Uh. But I would say the most are a bit lax. More late, uh, not as accurate as compared to even Phoenix, which is one of the not not gonna lie worst uh, model makers out there. I'm only collecting it because of its uh, availability. It's very fast, you know, to get models out and well, uh, other than H eighty more, most of them are quite okay for the price you get. This is not worth it, but it's an interactive. I mean. Interactives are like either Gemini or JC, like don't even Phoenix or NG make it, so it's a rare collectible. Eh? So this is something that's highly collectible, like they say. Yeah, these are, even the original Atlas Air version can sell out for like 100 USD nowadays. Hmm. But although I would still say it's better to invest in the Delta CAG 900. Yeah, those you can get for about... 20, 20 to 25 US dollars, and uh, you can sell it for 1000 USD. I mean, who wouldn't want that, right? Mm. Uh, realistic metal landing gear, okay, I guess. I mean, Gemini JC Wings landing gear isn't the best, but it's okay. Uh, detailed printed graphics, they're fine, I guess. As real as it gets, trademark seriously features. Um, I wouldn't say it's as real as it gets, there's any features to it other than just your printing, your engine placement. Everything is just. I mean, everybody can just use that trademark, it's the same, you know, it's not really much difference, huh? Uh, I wouldn't really consider it to be trademarked by Gemini, just, I mean, like, there's not actually no feature. It's just your printing, you know, the way you do your gear, it's the whole construction of the aircraft itself, from chunk of metal into the aircraft you see now. That's the feature. Mm. So, think we do that. So, I'm gonna show you the pop-up tab. Voila. Ah, uh, okay. I'm gonna show it bigger now. Okay, so... There you are. So I'm gonna show it in a sort of operating procedure. Uh, I'm gonna start from the top and then we're gonna move downwards. So, we're gonna go and start into a short backstory on the 747-8F. 747-8F, do you want me to narrate? Yeah, I think we should narrate. Trademark Boeing. Uh, forever the Queen of the Skies, the 747-8I and F were... Uh, Modernize, well, mo uh, modernize L47s for the 21st century. Uh, first announced a prototype uh, as a development in 2005. Took to the skies 5 years later in 8 of Feb 2020. Uh, whole series will replace ever popular 100, 200, 300, and 400 types. Of which, to be honest, I think other than the 100, most of them are still in service. The 200, 300 are really, really rare. But the 400 is the best seller. The Dash 8, I think, is the worst off seller. Other than the SP, because um, the SP will produce about 40, 50 types. The 100 was about a few hundred types. This, I think, uh, is in between the 100 and 300 series. Cause those also sold really badly. Eh? The best sellers would be the 200 and 400. This is because of uh, Gulf War, rising fuel price, and obviously your... Uh, uh, hub, your hub, uh, hub and spoke model being replaced with your point to point model. But we shall see what they say. The 747 8 features an all new wing and engine. That's quite true. They had a redesigned wing with red wing tips. That's so why it gives you that signature curve like this 787. It has a new engine, the GENX. Yeah, it is. Uh, based off the Trend 1 GE. Yeah, the GE engines used in the. Uh, 787. Hmm? Uh, it has enhanced electronic, basically a modernized glass cockpit from that of the 20th century. Still, the interior, uh, I wouldn't say that because it's a freighter. Use of more lighter weight components to composite, essentially. 
uh, for the ultimate in efficiency, length and fuse sludge, yeah, it is longer. Uh, gives it a enhanced capacity and makes it the longest passenger airliner in the world. Okay, uh, hint note here, longest doesn't mean you carry more people. Eh? The A380 is shorter than the 747-8 but yet it carries more people and if it was converted into so-called a fully freighter model, which was hoped actually, uh, it would actually be carry more cargo than the 747-8F. Eh? Now, and they're saying improvement in technology and uh, aerodynamics, I really don't see much change in aerodynamics. Eh? Um, the 747-8 burns less fuel, operates quieter and travel further. Uh, obviously compared to self design designed in the past because of techno uh, like I said technological improvements design features have been carried over from all the yeah like I said the 787 is a lot of the influence here um, you could say the 747 original was the mother and the 787 is the father allowing airlines to operate both types opportune is the opportunity to reduce operating costs I wouldn't say that for passenger aircraft, more for freighter because the freighter will be able to use enhanced capacity and longer range. And that is why more people buy the 787 than the 747-8. You know. um, but obviously with a new um, increasing number of 747-400 retired, this has also put a Dash 8 out of service in real life. Actually, yes, uh, the 747 is gonna the last few is going to be produced for Atlas Air very very soon. So. Yeah, it's gonna join its brother, the H380, very soon. Its competitor, the H380, is gonna be joined by the 747-8 very soon. Yeah, because of uh, COVID-19, hub and spoke model change, a lot of airlines, British Airlines, I think, uh, what's it? Yeah, China Airlines, they're retiring 747-400s. You know, not even their freighter. So that is opening up a huge opportunity for the ever-expanding cargo market to have more cargo freighters. Yeah, you see my point there. Yeah. So, uh, moving on, the 787 operate, uh, allow airline to operate both types, no airline actually does that other than Air China, because mm -hmm. there's no 787 freighter. Uh, the opportunity to reduce operating costs with blending of technology is nonsensical, because only Air China will see the effects of that. Blending of technology, 747-8 is a proven design, yet benefits from latest technology only for cargo airlines and features of the Airbus 77. This is like, uh, we've got the technology of the 787 and the cargo airlines want this, so we'll make a new aircraft just because people want that. Mm? Mm -hmm. Now we move down to our stack, stack, uh, specs board. Uh, livery, it's actually quite wrong, should be airline is cargo lux. The painted livery will be a cargo lux uh, standard livery. Uh, which we'll get into more once we get the model out. The aircraft type is the 747-8. R7 is the customer code for Cargo Lux, so that means if they have 747 that directly from Boeing, it will be considered 747-400 R7. F there being the freighter, uh, code name for freighter. Serial number is 35811. Line number 1461. Registration LX for Luxembourg. V, C, F, as its registration. Engines are G, E, and X, 2B67, which are another variant of G, E, and X. There's a lot of variants of these engines, so I won't really delve into it. Uh, now, it first flew on the 30th of August and was delivered uh, 12 days later, in 12th of September. 12 to 13 days later. Its mTOR is as standard with other 747-8s being 987,000 pounds. Although if you want it in kilos, you would have to give me a sec. Okay, yeah? I need to run my calculations. Uh, pounds to kilogram. For those who aren't, uh, uh, you know, in America. 987,000. Pounds is roughly four hundred and forty-seven thousand six hundred and ninety-five point six six nine kilograms. Although if you put it into imperial ton, it will be four hundred forty point six two five tons, which is the standard use. Because kilogram can get bigger if you don't realize. Cruising speed is five hundred sixty-one miles an hour, which if we convert again, I know. I know. Miles an hour to kilometer an hour. Cruising speed is at 561 miles an hour. Will return us at 902 
0.842 kilometers an hour. If we put, turn this into nautical, into nautical miles, that would be 487.496 nautical miles. Uh, fine, not nautical miles. 487.496 knots. Am I reading this correct? Yeah, should be. If this is wrong, uh, you can let me know. Uh, by leaving it down in the comments below. Now we look at our range. Alright, which would be about 4741 miles which if we convert to kilometers would be 7629.9 kilometers or if we turn this into nautical miles 4119.816 nautical miles effectively meaning you can travel uh, long range 12, uh, 13 hours easily hmm? cargo capacity is 303,000 700 pounds. So the maximum takeoff weight actually includes the weight of the aircraft. Whereas cargo capacity is because it's a freighter, it doesn't need to carry passengers. Eh? So this is the M tow minus MT weight, giving you 303,700 pounds. Which, if I am correct, right here, uh, 303700. Would weigh roughly thirteen thousand one hundred thirty seven thousand seven hundred fifty six point zero zero three kilograms, or if we convert to ton metric tons, one hundred thirty five point five eight zero three five seven tons. Sorry for the lot of this and more. It's the conversion rate. Um, yeah, if not, we can uh, get into what is actually hiding. Sorry for all the uh, technicalities, though. It's just what it is. Oh, oh, we got more technicalities. I forgot about this. Sorry, I don't actually uh, study in the US, so I don't really know what all these are. I don't know if this is inches or yards. I'll just say it's 252. That for the length, height is 83. 63.6. Wingspan is 224.7. My best guess being the length is 250 meters. Height, 63 meters. Wingspan, 224 meters. And then the length being 2 miles, height being 6 miles, and wingspan being 7 miles. Call me if I'm wrong, the Americans. Or anybody who actually knows the actual specs of the 747-8. Wait, I can actually double check it right here. Give me a sec. Although it is quite tiring to hold this flap up and flap continuously. Let's just get, let me get into the specs. See? Hmm... No, it's actually uh, feet and inches. So it's tw um sorry, correct co um, uh, correction here. Length is two hundred fifty feet and two inches, which is seventy six point three meters. Height being sixty three feet and six inches, nineteen point four meters. Wingspan being two hundred twenty four feet and seven inches, sixty eight point four meters. Now, if you see on the screen above, here will be a comparison model between five of the top largest aircraft in the world. The Strato launched with uh, the same GECF6 engines used to power the 747 on there, six of them. The Hugh H4 Hercules, one of the largest float planes in the world. Antonov 225 Maria, the largest cargo, uh, largest jet aircraft in the world, and the largest aircraft in the world. The A380, the world's largest passenger aircraft by passenger volume. And obviously the 747-8. It's going to be labeled, this is all going to be labeled in the following colors. Pink yellow, green, red, and blue respectively. Take your time now to see them all. And now, well, we move on to the inside the guts. Okay, so this is the interior. You wouldn't want it, do you? I would. It's a gorgeous view. So you can see there's about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, actually eight spare parts. It's just that you see seven out here. There's actually one in the nose right there. Uh, but you know, you know, see this all properly. We're gonna have to take this thing out of the box, baby. All right, so we've got to open it, and my trusted knife is here. Gonna just slot it in, break it up. No formalities with this, eh? It's just all standard operating procedure, SOP. So if you're gonna open it up, there's nothing special unlike Phoenix, so okay. I'm gonna put it out. Oh wait, yeah, I forgot to show you guys the back. 
Oh yeah, oh, this is all just an effective advertisement, so I won't show it much. But you can slow this picture uh, video down and uh, frame by frame actually see what I'm showing here at the back of the box. Because other than that, it's just free advertisement. Not that free real estate thing, eh? So here's the model. Um, if you can actually see, it's actually uh, on both sides. But if not, let me just show you. Eh? So the top plastic is actually uh, connected to the, it's actually some of them, the plastic likes to get stuck to this top here, to the um, plastic casing, which I actually like because that way it's much easier because then I don't have to remember, oh, where did I place this plastic? Because if I want to sell the model off, I must, it's better to have everything, right? So if I don't have the plastic wrappings, even if I do, I may not know sometimes, oh, wait, where, 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 which side did I put it? Was it this way or that way? And then sometimes people see and they were, and they say, oh, you know, this model could not have been, could have been uh, not properly handled. So, yeah. I've taken it off. You can see there's a second flap. Now, this one is a must to remove because if you see, if I don't, all the parts will be stuck inside. Eh? So, uh, I'm just going to take out the model by itself, not the parts. I will put the part box to one side first. Alright, and I'm just going to show you the model by itself. So, this is actually where the spare part is. You know, where's the extra other part? Then those. Huh? Mm -mm -mm. It's just placed there for the aesthetics, uh, for me. For me, my best belief is that it's placed like this for the aesthetics, you know. But obviously, you can just remove it. I'll show you what it looks like more on the detail inside, but yeah. That's the box for you. And then to show you what it comes like, you know, without the parts inserted, this is what it is. Um, you can see that there's a hole here for the parts. I'm gonna put the parts more actually a bit more to the side, hopefully not dropping. And actually on the underside, there's another one here, and then there's another one here. And the thing is that it's not without my mask, there's a mask thing here. The reason why I bought this instead of just a not difficult cargo like some person actually hit. When I could though, is... Again, the mask, COVID, it's very relatable, you know, to a lot of us. You know, nowadays when lockdown, you know, we can see these planes running around, you know, the whole of Asia, the whole of Europe. You know, anywhere in the world, you know. And it warms the cockles of our hearts. So... Yeah, I'll get into the more real soon. For now, uh, it's just uh, enjoy this while I get my equipment up. Dun, 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 dun. The pet has arrived. Focus. There you go, the 747-8 is stated all the way at the bottom. You got it with the A380, so yeah. Oh yeah, by the way, if you're thinking how heavy is this aircraft, is it going to be as light as the Phoenix A380 which uses an airline? No, it's actually as heavy. If I could give you a, gra a weighing scale to actually weigh, I would. But uh, no, because I don't own a weighing scale. Because why would I weigh my own models? So I've placed it at the tip right here, as people can see right now. Mm -hmm, it's at the tip, so this is what it looks like. For now, I haven't added my... Uh, most of my other equipment in yet. Yeah, so I'm gonna put this in first of all in the closed configuration. You can see there's a steel hole. So we're gonna start off with our main deck, which only has one door. We have this right here, this beautiful piece right here. So you can see why um, if my camera can just focus for one part of their life. Okay, uh, I'm gonna put it here. You can see why it has a flap, right? You can see just barely from the that flap. It's because in the model itself, if you can see the underside, there's actually one groove which we actually had to fit into. So, there we go. Pop the groove in. Oh, wrong way. Yeah, there. It fits. Good. Oh, oh, the nose came out in my hand. Don't worry, I have it here. For this one, uh, if you can see it in perspective, Yeah, you can see that the uh, there's two knobs here. Now this is to fit in with the current hole at the front of the aircraft. Now obviously I'll explain a reason for that later. And then there's two um, walls surrounding it. So with that, you just... Uh, this is one of the more easier uh, parts of the uh, interactive, is to just uh, slot the nose in. Just like that. Boom. And uh, most of the time it actually matches really well. In terms of the detail and everything, it really matches on to the aircraft itself. You can see that you know, most of the lines is about there. Like. You can't make it very accurate in interactive. So, you know, not a lot of accuracy can be achieved. 
So um, now we're gonna put in our lower deck, cargo deck loaders. So these will be like, you know, uh, the same as your normal cargo decks if you have uh, uh, passenger aircraft. I'm gonna start with this one here. You are looking at the, uh, car if you look to the right side, first of all, it really says not without my mask. If you look to the left side, what is it missing? And I am not Dora, so I'm just gonna tell you straight, it's the my and the M from the mask. So we're gonna slot this in the same fashion. Of the groove. Uh, let's see, come on. I, I would prefer for you to, you know, just hold the model actually up and then slot it, in, you know, and then allow gravity to actually push it in. Uh, then we're gonna look at the aft one, the aft cargo hole. Just got to get the piece out. It's kind of uh, hard to take it out, especially from the small compartments they are held in. Out. Although I will teach you one thing. And this is one of those cases where it's just best to keep your boxes, then you will. You know, be able to keep your spare parts so like this and push it in. Actually, I want to show you a, a very funny thing, uh, a very uh, unique thing about the interactive series is that each piece is custom, you know, accordingly. Eh? You can see it's just a bit curved. Yeah, this is to fit the uh, curved shape at the rear. Mm. So we shall fit this in. There we go. And uh, well, we have a fully. Um, decked out a uh, freighter we can begin with our more comparison eh? shall we although to be honest this time i really 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 need to use the self force to see it's not that blind or anything we just need to you know it's how should i put this Hmm. It's very complicated to review this model. Alright, and I'll show you the open configuration later. That one I also have some things. So this is gonna be quite long, like the 40 minute Bruce Lee video. I'm sorry. I'm not the type of people that do the I'm not the type of people that do detail um short videos. I'm the one that likes to have detail in there. So if you could just give me a sec, eh? Hmm. Oh yeah, by the way, um, I think that the mold should be fine considering it's the only sound person that is interactive that they use, so... Okay, I brought up and uh, I really am um, gonna start from nose, fuselage, uh, hump, fuselage, and then the tail and abdomen. Just gonna start it like uh, the three parts of uh, uh, insect's body. You've got your head, Forex and your abdomen, eh? So I am looking at the uh, the normal one, and I'm really starting to notice something from the nose, huh? So we can uh, we we'll start off with the nose. Yeah. Uh, let's see, zoom that in. So if I'm making a correct uh, look here, the gear door should be actually, uh, I'm going to start from the top, the nose here actually uh, should be more angled downwards, that means this part here, it needs to be a bit more, you need to see the curve down a bit more, like a, it needs to be more of looking like a 80, 70 degree angle instead of a 60 degree curve, but other than that, no, not really, the nose is, um, how would I phrase it? The nose should be a a bit longer, just a bit. You could uh I would say that maybe it could extend to maybe from here about one, two millimeters out accordingly because I'm looking at the actual picture here and it should be uh, um if it is just a bit longer, maybe about two to five millimeters, I think that would be quite accurate. And then as for this one instead of being looking like a 40, 50, 60 degree curve, maybe make it more Eight, around the 789, 70, 80 degree angle here. Uh, moving down uh, to the gear, gear like I think that the gears were should be fine. I think if I'm correct, if I'm just double checking, yeah, it's a uh, yeah, it's about the same height, maybe a bit too short by about two millimeters. If I can get 
area. Yeah, it's about one to two millimeter short from my perspective. If then we move to the here, uh, the hump the hump is obviously a lot shorter than the bigger humps of the eye variant because um, why you need such a long hump for you know just gonna add more weight and uh, more. How do I phrase this? Add more weight. They're gonna add more, um, you know, drag. You know, so they make it a lot shorter. Yeah. Uh, in which I think in this case the hum should be perfectly fine. It should be just nice. Huh? Uh, no, it isn't. I think that this part here, this uh, so I think the curve could be a lot uh, smoother. I can see that um, for the cargo variance, yes, it extends to maybe roughly about here or here, but still, I need the curve to look smooth. You know, from my perspective right now, it looks like it's coming in from an angle of about say 80, 70 degrees, maybe 50. I need it to come out to about 30 or 20 degrees. In terms of curvature, it looks a lot, make a lot smoother, smoother. But they have gotten the three um, windows correct. The, although my question now is, is it in the correct position? And for that, we will have to look at the other side because I'm comparing for pictures of the others of the right, left side. And um, yeah, it actually is, which is about about one millimeter to two millimeters behind the main door. If it moves to a fuselage, um, everything should be fine here. I don't think there should be any problems here. If you, and then now if we move to the tail, there shouldn't be any problems with the aft section of the fuselage. So now we move on to our tail. I'm going to talk about the printing a lot later. Uh, overall, I think the tail is okay. If we look at the printing, everything should be in order. The AP is very well done. This has actually like a metal tubing and you should fit into it, which is quite incredible, you know. But then I don't think so. uh, I think everything is good overall. Uh, we shall now focus on the wings. Eh? Um, the wings. So right now I've got a really good comparison here from pictures, and I'm seeing that the wing angle for now is beautiful, excellent. It isn't really as hard, bad of a curvature. Not too high, not too low. They've got the subtle spiral, just nice. Um, obviously with the red ring tip, it looks a lot more up. So the subtle spiral isn't clear, but it really is. And the GE uh, NX engines are actually see-through, if I can show you. It's a bit hard to see, but it is, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, considering the technology we are in nowadays. And uh, let's move to the undergear. Alright, so we've got our undercarriage here. Um, I think overall it should be okay. I think there's a lack of laziness in printing, eh? You can see here you've got obviously your ram air turbine superbly detailed. Now um, there's these three squares here. Uh, I can't remember what is it actually for. My best guess is that they are the exhaust outlet for the ram air turbine because of the way they're positioned. But to be honest, compared to the JC Wing 400, this is sh utter nonsense. The JC Wings one had a bit of a length about you know where I am drawing right now my knife. It's about that long. They, and it has engravings, painting, and indentures into it. This is just three squares. Like, bro. Um, the engines are fine, like I said. Um, just the same uh, issue we face now with modern modes is smaller contact points, so it's a bit more weak. Other than that, no, the gears are the same as that of the uh, JC Wings one, so they're quite robust, they're quite uh, tiltable, they're quite... They're quite agile for the purpose to serve. They are very intricate also. We move on to the tail. I don't think there's nothing much I can there's nothing much I can say about it. And you've got your APU printings and all, which are as superbly done. That's nice. And then yeah. That's that. So now we move on to our printing. So I'm gonna show you what details there are in the printing and what's not. And I'm gonna show you this in the close configuration first because there are two, right? Hmm. Okay, so we're gonna start again. Head, thorax, abdomen. Yeah? So we start off here. We zoom in. We've got our mask, you know, with the lines and the seams at the top here, our fabric and the metal. Bottom here, we've got a Luxembourg logo, uh, Lux City of Luxembourg, 
country of Luxembourg's uh, more, um, advertising campaign, I think, here in the word Luxembourg. Not without my mask, uh, the Cargolux livery, I mean the Cargolux branding, your EU logo, your escape hatch for pilots, your main door, which is obviously. And then the mask uh, strap is actually wrapped around the C of Cargolux, which is quite nice considering C is actually like a hook. And it says not without my mask. Uh, right here, what you see now is most likely a half lion, half dragon mix. I'm not exactly Luxembourg. I'm a Luxembourgan, I think that's how I call them, but yeah. I'm not exactly a person from Luxembourg, so I don't know what that means, but I think that's most likely the Luxembourg Public Health Department and its uh, related uh, logo. You've got your landing lights here, beautifully painted, printed on. You have your Cargo Lux uh, continuing for a red and blue stripe all the way to our interactive here. The name 747-A and your registration LXVCF. They move up to our tail right here with the Cargo Lux Triple Cube. Just like to call them um, this time in white because of a red background livery. And then you've got the Welsh Coat of Arms. Eh, not the Welsh. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I, uh, I pronounced the Luxembourg as Welsh. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just saw the drag, the sort of lion thing. Uh, and that was Welsh. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 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 It's the Welsh. <sighs> I'm sorry, I'm just so used to looking at Welsh items, even though I'm not Welsh. This is the Luxembourg coat of arms, finally. I'm so sorry, Welsh. People of Wales, I'm so sorry. And for the people of Luxembourg, it's the Luxembourg coat of arms, and this is reflected on uh, both sides, so I need more, not saying more. This is reflected on both sides. So now we get into the talk of the town. Interactive, how do we, you know, um... You can just call me GC or G. How do we actually change our interactives? I'm going to do this like again on the same set parts. You know, um, nose, main, and the um, front lower deck and re aft lower deck. So um, we're going to start with our, I mean, cargo hold. Nose, we, this is a very easy one. Just get some friction, it plugs out, and you can see the hollow inside. Eh? Would you like to see the hollow insides? The worst nightmare of every model airliner. The inside. <laughs> yep, and then we're gonna get in our piece, which is where our knobs come in. Yep. This baby right here is our um, open configuration. By the way, all these are plastic, not metal, so they may color. Okay, uh, in faster than the metal, so. You can see there's actually two pins here, which you have to be really, really careful. So I wouldn't suggest this aircraft being recommended to uh, someone who's new. Maybe someone who's more experienced. Uh, maybe for me, someone 50, 16 or older. Yep, so you can see that uh, there's pins. You know, on the uh, two pins. So we just attach them to the pin holes which you saw just now. Uh. Yep, you can see that there's pinholes. So you just slot it into the pinhole. Push it in. And it's so carefully printed that it reflects the whole stretch of the mask, you know, going in. You know, going up and down in the open and close configuration. The mask is actually able to show its whole line of going through. And then you've got, uh, it's a very nice spot moment to see the Cargo Lux logo right there. That you can actually see this actually Cargo Lux logo right there. Mmm. So now we move on to our main deck loader. So this is our part. It also has the same printing, just that it's in the closed configuration. Eh? So it also has the Cargo Lux logo there. And it's a nice one because it actually puts Cargo Lux 50 at the over there. Yeah? Now we move on to our main deck loader, also on the left side. Now for this, I need to teach you a hack. Um, if you if you know my hobby house, they are uh, they are Malaysia's leading uh, for four hundred scale. Although I'm not Malaysian, um, they recommend using a big piece of blue tack. I would not. I recommend something small size, huh? Something maybe about the size of the uh, small um, door, uh, close configuration uh, cargo hold doors. You know, about this small. It, that small should do the trick. You know. I don't think you need such a big piece of blue tech, you know, and you can use it for better uses. Yeah, yeah, small one. Mine is a white one, so gently tap in. You don't have to squeeze in, you know. You don't have to squeeze all the way in, you know. 
just go in, gently tap, and it, it should come out, obviously. But obviously you need to apply certain force, because sometimes if you push it in too hard, it actually may get lodged and friction will not allow for it to come out. Huh? So sometimes a bit of force is needed, but this one didn't need that much force, huh? maybe a bit more than usual, if I put it in gently. Now we've got our open version here. Not really much difference. It's if you can just put it here, it's actually also possible to be placed like that. Hmm. Yeah. So uh, if we just now just slot it into the same groove we used just now, it should hold. Yeah, because you can see the grooves we saw just now. Other than helping hold the uh, main cargo doors in. The old close configuration lost in place other than just making use of it being just slotted a uh, lot into place. Ah, oh, man, balance. You have to try and fit it in through the slots and then you can wedge it in because once you're done, you can just pull it out, you know. Uh, but do be careful, these are all very brittle plastic parts, so like I said, 15 or 16 year old recommended. But if I show you from the top view, it's actually not as accurate as you think. It's a bit of an extra straight piece flashing up, so yeah, then uh, we can move on to our. I go home. Uh, starting with the knot without my mask and heart. That's what it looks like. Here. Extract it out again with P of gentleness and it comes out. Then uh, you get our open one. You gotta be careful when you try and take them out because you may crack or break them. So you got to be extra careful. And so, like I was saying, um, we're going to get this piece in. Obviously, this is the open one. So, no matter what, it will always have perfect printing. This is what I like about interactive is that in the open or closed form, it would have the original style as it was. No, not just some um, unitary piece that they can use all the time. You now, rather, it's a piece that's singular, unitary, yes, but it can be printed differently. So there we are, that's our, well, sort of open configuration for the front aft, for the front ca uh, low cargo hole. All I got to say, why is there such a gap over here? I can see I'm locking it in with gentle, uh, gently, and you can see that there's a lot of width uh, in between here and here. You know, and there's also a lot of width in between um, the uh, one on the main deck. You can see that there's about one to two millimeters of gap in between. I'm gonna show you something ironic. Once I go on to the last one, the aft cargo hole, or we shall call it the rear cargo hole. So, like I said, gently, no bit, then it comes out. Really. So gentle. You don't have to be so trying to scratch it out or what. You just get some small piece of blue tag, maybe roughly about the size of one of those smaller. Cargo folk doors, you know, and you should be able to take them out with ease. And then obviously we've got our the only plain piece in this set. You know, that's not actually printed now, or doesn't look like it's actually printed here. Uh, although to be honest, I think that the main deck loader one, and other than the mask one, uh, the mask, the part where there's a mask, right? The not without my uh, the my mask. Uh, at the front the cargo hole and the nose, which has the mask livery painted, I don't really see the need. Um, um, I I don't really see any changes need to be made for the printing. They just need to use the same as they did with the uh, what's it called? Oh yeah, with the it's the same as the other printing that you use with your cargo lux interactive, which I think they have one standard livery because the fifty year special was not. And interactive because it was a 400 series. Now that we've actu uh, actually pushed it in nice and tight, right there we've um, and it's settled in. You can see this one actually has zero to no signs of in depth in between. Like you can see that it fits almost right in at home. Just gotta wiggle it in. You can see it almost fits in and it also forms quite nice out. I think it's also partly because of the curve, meaning that they've had to add a bit more groove into it. You can see I wiggle you know, this one in, it doesn't even go in anymore. This one you wiggle it in, at least it goes in some more, you know. So 
that one fits really well. So now I'm going to uh, show you the model as it is in the open configuration, all four cargo holds done. Mm. Isn't this a beautiful one? So for me, in conclusion, I think that the Interactive is a really nice series. Although obviously there are some pointers that I need to push out, like I said, the lack of detail on certain parts and the lack of um, accuracy in certain parts, like I've highlighted in the uh, review of the whole model itself. Uh, but other than that, I don't really think it's a bad model. I think for the price that you get, right, it's it's not that bad. Um, although let me just say uh, a word uh, to Gemini and JC because they share the same factory. Sorry, those are F-15s running over. Yeah. Um, I think that it should be fine overall. I think that um, just a word of advice, maybe we could make it a, a detailed more. Something more detailed, you know, than, you know, make it more worth, you know, you're paying for actually the more and not because of the interactive series. Thus, the price difference, yeah. You know, because this can cost like actually five, six, extra five or six. Maybe even for three to two US dollars, it sounds like nothing. But to certain countries, because of the exchange rate, it makes it actually feel like a lot. So... This is where my words have to come into play. Don't, don't, don't try not to make it, how would I phrase it, too much of like a niche price, you know. Because with the same price that I bought this aircraft, I can actually buy a very, very, very beautiful 757 from NG. Or even A350, 787, anything from NG. It's around the 50s range. I can get it instead of this. Why did I choose this? It's interactive. But it doesn't mean that every interactive is worth buying, let me just tell you. Not every. It depends on. For me, I got it because of the mask and its relation to COVID, you know. Yeah. And it's also because it's, the mask is a beauty. I mean, they've got this mask color alright. Compared to the Garuda mask that they have, it was a bit off. This one was quite accurate, so. Not gonna lie, and there's a lot more intricacy for accuracy and detail on this, and I found that really done up on really well on this mask delivery. You know, so. I decided, hey, why not you know, buy it and have a try? Um, so yeah, here's my recommendation. Only special livery interactives uh, or Asian interactive, Asian aircraft interactives are for me. Other than that, um, yeah, I, I mean that's like every cargo aircraft in the world can be an interactive. It just depends on how the manufacturers want to make it and whether if they want to make it. For me personally, I would like to see something you know, to the likes of every cargo aircraft actually having an interactive series. You know, even those down to those small, small props like the DC-6 and DC-3, Interactives would actually be very good for a lot of the people out there trying to help make the world, uh, the model aircraft dioramas a lot more detailed, you know. Uh, I think that uh, ANA's Precision Models 1400 scale, their doors of the 747 can actually open in an open configuration. And, you know, so it really adds to the sense of detail, you know, people who buy this model, which I don't because I do not live in Japan, um, they are able to, um, you know, repurpose, you know, and have actually all those uh, figurines actually walk up the stairs, you know, as I can board it. This, I can't even get, like, anybody to, even if this was, you know, I can't even get any stairs uh, to pair with this because the door doesn't even open. So that means I can't even load, like, a stairs to put the pilots in, you know, it's this sort of thing. Yeah. But other than that, no, so, um... Now, I'll be updating this video once I get my uh, proper ground equipment for this aircraft in. The cargo uh, ground equipment, yeah, once I get that in, I will update the video with photos of it also. But if not, um, enjoy the current snapshot video, I'll, of which I will be using my Shanghai Pudong background. Sorry, I have to zoom out for that. Yep, this is the Shanghai Pujong. I have another one, it's the Taipei one. I will show it to you in another review. But if not, I think that... Uh, what do you think of this Shanghai Pujong one? Is it a nice one? Uh, what other airports do you think I should get? Um, do not, it must be Asian. If not, uh, yeah, if so, leave it down in the comments below. If not, uh, thank you for watching this video and enjoy the